the Lord Jesus, his heart is rejoicing this day. His heart is rejoicing the Lord, like the responsorial psalm said, the Lord delights in his people. He is delighted to see you. Delighted that you come in search of the salvation of Jesus. Delighted that you are, are, have the faith in him, in Jesus. And so this is the, this is what gives the Lord joy is his people. People like yourselves, no matter what you've suffered, no matter where you've been, or what's going on, he rejoices to see you. Come to me, all you who labor and find life a burden, and I will give you rest. Amen? Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, because I am meek and humble of heart. There is a story in the scriptures, we all know it well, the story of Joseph, who was sold into slavery by his brothers, and now they came into Egypt, uh, to look for grain, for food, so the family would survive in the famine. And they came to Joseph, who was now the, uh, in charge of all the possessions of the Pharaoh. And they came to him, and they came to him, not recognizing him, looking, at, looking to him for grain, for food, for some way to survive for their, for their people. And, Joseph saw them and what he really wanted to, what he really wanted to give them was his, what he wanted was to be reconciled with them. That they would be a family again. That they would enter into a friendship with each other again. And that they would have this love of the family again reestablished among them. And this is the same as, as all of us. When we, we go to the Lord Jesus, today you come to the Lord Jesus looking for some healing, for some liberation, for some new life, for some consolation. And the Lord Jesus wants to give you all of that. But what he really wants is to, or he, he really wants is your love. And to enter into a friendship again. And to be reconciled with each other. And to be in, and to be in love with each other again. You and Jesus. Amen? Amen? This is what he really longs for. He longs for your friendship. That's all, that's, that's what he wants. He'll give you everything else. But he is seeking above all else your heart. So that's the first step in liberation, my brothers and sisters, is the first step in deliverance, is the first step in new life, is to, is to enter into that love of the Lord Jesus once again in your life, to renew your love for Him, to turn to Him with love, to put your life on His authority, to put your trust in Him, to speak to Him words of love. This is what is this is what we need in the world right now. There's so much loneliness in the world. There's so much sin, there's so much destruction of life, there's so much uh, evil all around us. But the, great, the greatest, but, but there's, uh, the, the, there's like an epidemic of loneliness in our families, in our homes, in our parishes, in our schools, in our ministries. In our society, especially our young people are suffering from some kind of terrible loneliness. Maybe many of you today are suffering from that loneliness also. Maybe there's been weeks and months, maybe in your family, in your marriage, in your parish, even where there's no words of love, no words of compassion, no words of kindness. So the first beginning of the transformation of all that is to open up your heart to the Lord Jesus and to renew your love for him so he begins to heal your heart and your soul so you become 
that person who brings that compassion and love of Jesus wherever you go. But today is about you having that renewal in his love and renewal in his in putting your life on his authority so his glory and his power begin to be manifested in your life. Amen? Amen. And so we turn to the Jesus as, our, as the first step in having that new life. Maybe we could even speak words of love to Jesus. Do you ever do that? Just speak to him with love. Jesus, I love you. Come into my heart today. Guide me. Be with me. Maybe you're afraid to speak words of love to Jesus, but this is why Jesus came into the world as a little child all those years ago. This is why he came as a little child, so nobody would be afraid of him, so nobody would live in fear of him. You see a little child, Jesus comes into the world as a little child, just holding out his arms, longing for a word of love, a word of kindness, a word of compassion. Don't be afraid of the Lord Jesus. Don't be afraid to open up your heart to him, to let him into your life, to speak to him with love. Don't be afraid because every word of kindness or compassion or love you speak to Jesus, it touches his heart so much that his heart, his, all his love flows out to you. Amen? Amen? Even for a few moments we could just begin to do that. Let's create a little wave of love, of words of love. Maybe we could, just, we could all just begin to speak to Jesus with love. Jesus, I love you. I'm grateful for your love. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you, Jesus, for being here with me. I love you, Jesus. I trust you. I praise you. I love you. I glorify you. I give you thanks for your great glory. Lord Jesus, let's do that. Let's create this little wave of love. Speak words of love to Jesus. We start, Jesus, I love you. Come into my life today. Guide me. Be with me. Jesus, I love you. Give me your peace. I'm grateful to you, Lord Jesus. I trust you, Lord Jesus. I praise you. I glorify you. Now, I know this is very difficult for us to do as Catholics. <laughs> I, remind the story, I, I tell people about the story of the Irish farmer. And one time he said to his wife, You know, Mary, I've loved you so much these last 43 years of marriage. I've loved you so much that sometimes I came this close to telling you. <laughs> sad, isn't it? <laughs> and it's not just Irish farmers. <laughs> I think we're all, we're all have become, become very shy about telling each other, I love you, I'm grateful to you, thank you for helping me, thank you for being with me. But to speak words of, and it's also very difficult for us as Catholics to, to pray out loud and talk to Jesus out loud. What's happened to us? that we're afraid even to talk to Jesus with love. And we're afraid to say it out loud, I love you, Jesus. Come into my heart, come into my life. I spent 27 years of my priesthood with great joy in South Central Los Angeles, with the, in the midst of the gangs and the violence and the uh, killings. And the, but I... Even there, I could say, but there, in the middle of all that, I always saw that when even young people on the street or people in the parish or anybody in the school or when people began to speak with love to Jesus, they would tell me, even after a few days of doing that, they would begin to feel Jesus walking with them and Jesus giving them new life and huge problems getting lesser and lesser and things just a bit more kindness and love come into their homes. So let's try it. Let's begin this, begin this conversation of love with Jesus that hopefully begins this morning as a small little wave of love 
coming to Jesus, but will grow and grow and grow in your life, all your life and all eternity. Begin now that new life by speaking with love to Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Come into my life today. Guide me and be with me. Jesus, I love you. I receive you again as my beautiful Lord and Savior. I receive you again as my only Lord and Savior. Jesus, I love you. Forgive me for my sins. Help me to love you more and more. Jesus, I love you. Help help me to love you more and more. Help me to love my family more and more. Help me to follow you more closely. Amen. I know everyone, just your own words. You can use the same words I've used right now or just make up your own words. Just talk to him with love. Jesus, I love you. Commit to my life. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you. Jesus, I love you. I receive you again as my Lord and Savior. I praise you. I glorify you. I give you thanks for your great glory. Lord Jesus, I thank you for all your great love for me, for guiding me, for being with me, for never deserting me. Thank you, Jesus, that you've stayed with me all these years, guiding me step by step to new life. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We could sing this little hymn. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in thine ear. All together. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. To worship you, O my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In thy name. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Did you feel some joy when you were singing there? Did you feel joy came over us? That joy you felt was the joy in the heart of Jesus. The joy he feels when he is, when you speak to him with love. When you sing to him with love. And you, the joy you felt was the joy in his heart. So if you like to have that joy in your heart every now and then, speak to him with love, sing to him songs of love, little hymns of praise that we all know. And this, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the first step in having that new life, in having that liberation and having that peace and having a life that's transformed is to turn to Jesus with love and and ask him for forgiveness for your sins the second prayer to have this new life is to forgive those who have hurt you in any way many of you are carrying wounds since your early childhood maybe you were abused, rejected Maybe there was terrible violence in your home or uh, addiction and alcoholism. 
you felt abandoned or alone. And these, 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 um, this, these traumas become wounds, deep wounds that you carry with you. Sometimes you wonder, why am I angry? Why am I, why can I find no peace? Why can I find no joy? And it's because you're carrying so many sins that were done against you and also, of course, maybe your own sins. But the second step in having this peace, first step is ask for forgiveness for your own sins. The second step is to forgive those who have hurt you. To forgive those who have hurt you. Forgive them because... Not because they deserve to be forgiven, maybe, but because you deserve to have a new life. Jesus wants you to have a new life. He, you've suffered enough. He wants you to be liberated. And the second step in that liberation is to forgive those who have hurt you. I often tell the story of the man, a man who came into our church at St. Michael's one day. And he was saying to me, Father Dave, I'm going to kill everybody out there because they all disrespect me. I said to him, Alex, when they do that, just say what Jesus said on the cross. What did he say? Oh, Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. And Alex said, but they do. <laughs> so, even if they knew what they are doing, even if they knew... What, Forgive them anyway. You need, uh, uh, keeping that resentment in your heart in order to kind of punish them is like taking poison into your system to punish them for what they did to you. It doesn't do them any harm, but it's doing you terrible harm. That's the second step in having this liberation. The third step in liberation is to, uh, is to by the power of the Lord Jesus, to renounce the unclean spirits that have come into your life because of your own sins or the sins of others against you. And these unclean spirits are trying to dis- are doing you terrible damage. I know I grew up in my life I carried terrible anxiety for years and years and years and also anger. I could never really understand why I carried out so much anger and anxiety inside me. And I would say, Lord Jesus, I'm doing the best I can. Why is it? And then a number of years ago, Father Arthur from the Koinonia, St. Michael's, a beautiful St. Michael's. Some people are here from St. Michael's. But we, he prayed for me. These prayers that I'm praying with, I pray for you right now. The five prayers of love unbound. He said, I think you're carrying a spirit of anxiety a spirit, and a spirit of anger. And I said, well, I don't know where that came from. He said, well, talk, talk to me about your life a bit. But I did tell him about my, my mother had, a, had terrible anxiety and depression in her life because her mother committed suicide. And my mother's little child had found her mother hanging there in the house. And so my mother lived, and her, mother, her father was a terrible alcoholic. And so my brother, Dan, he died about 10 years ago of alcoholism. He, just, he, he got the spirit of alcoholism in his life from my grandfather. But I think I got from my mother, was passed down from her mother, the spirit of anxiety and a uh, spirit of depression and um, fear that she carried always and I just passed on to us because we lived in that all that, those years. But also many, you know, like if somebody is abused, they, get, they have a spirit of self-condemnation, self-hate, um, even sometimes self-destruction. Even a spirit of immorality comes in from abuse. Or somebody commits the sin of uh, abortion. Um, a spirit of death comes into your life, a spirit of self-condemnation, a spirit of despair. Because Satan is, Satan is cruel. Satan will entice you into a sin and then will invade you with these different spirits of self-hate and self-condemnation and fear and despair about salvation and will never cease to condemn you 
that voice in your mind and your heart that condemns you, my beautiful brothers and sisters, is not the voice of Jesus. It's the voice of Satan. The voice of condemnation is the voice of Satan. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Amen? Amen. This is his, Jesus wants to give you that new life, to free you for new life. That's the third prayer. The fourth prayer is that you once again assume your authority as a baptized child of God. And you, uh, by your authority, as a baptized, by the fact that you're baptized to be united into Jesus, this is this authority you have to renounce Satan and all evil spirits out of your life. We have to... We have done you wrong in many ways in our church because we have kept all that authority. We've just focused all the authority on the bishop or the priest. But you, the time has come for you to assert your authority also as being united to Jesus Christ. That you can renounce. You can pray for people. You can bless your family. You can renounce the evil that tries to destroy your life. Amen? And, um, of course, all the authority we have is not from, uh, is, is, is from the Jesus Christ. But we, we are united into Jesus Christ. And uh, when I'm saying these prayers for now, I will say, by my authority as a uh, bishop of the Roman Catholic Church, I renounce, uh, I call on the, uh, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to come upon his people to liberate you from the unclean spirits that are trying to do you damage. Amen? Amen. And the fifth prayer is the prayer of blessing upon you. So let's let's um, say these prayers now and pray for the Lord Jesus to to manifest his power in your life to give you liberation, to give you consolation. We do say these prayers. When, I remember when Father Arthur said these prayers for me. Um, I didn't feel anything very much at the moment, but then as the day went on, I began to have this joy and this peace in my heart that I had. It was beautiful. And I didn't even immediately connect it. Say, oh, that's what... This is what happens when you get liberated. You get to, this peace. This is what Jesus wants you to have. Peace in your heart and that peace was beautiful and it was um, and this is what you will experience too as you turn more and more to Jesus and turn more in his power to renounce the evil that comes into your life to renounce sin and to live in that new life walking with Jesus and with our beautiful blessed mother in that new life that God wants you to have So we'll stand for these prayers. So once again, we'll just begin by renewing our love for Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I receive you again as my only Lord and Savior. I put my life under your authority. I put my family under your authority. I put my marriage under your authority. I put all all my future under your authority, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Please forgive me for my sins. Oh Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the second prayer is that we pray the prayer of forgiveness. I'm going to mention some people that I need to forgive right now. Um, And um, I'm going to say their name and then I'm going to say why I forgive them. But um, I'm going to say it uh, quietly because I've got two microphones. One goes to the radio and one goes to... All over the all over the church, so I don't want to have. 
<laughs> but in the same way, you should uh, do it also. It's not, you don't say, it, it's not a silent prayer. You speak it quietly, just to yourself, uh, who you want to forgive, right? In the name of Jesus, I forgive so and so for this and this. All right? Okay, so let's, you can maybe think of two or three you have to forgive right now. Maybe somebody hurt you many, many years ago, or somebody just hurt you this morning. Or somebody's continually uh, upsetting you in your life. And you, you um, just pray forgiveness to them. So in the name of Jesus, I forgive. Say the name to yourself. And then say why you want to forgive them. Okay? So we'll do that two or three times. In the name of Jesus, I forgive my brother Don for his alcoholism, for the damage he did to my life. In the name of Jesus, I forgive. I forgive myself for all my ways in which I don't trust the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I forgive myself for not getting up so early. In the name of Jesus, I forgive my mother for passing on so much anxiety uh, to me. Amen. Did you do that? You were very quiet. <laughs> That's okay. All right, as long as you do it, and maybe right now you, 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 later on you might think of some other people you need to forgive. You could do it all. You can keep doing this. All right? Just in the name of Jesus, I forgive them for this and whatever they've done. All right? Okay, so now let's do, by the power of Jesus, we'll do the renunciation. And we'll all join in praying together for each other. For instance, I might say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of uh, alcoholism. Maybe you're not, uh, you know, hopefully you're not an alcoholic, but uh, you want to renounce it. But, you, uh, but maybe you're being affected in your family by somebody who's an alcoholic. Or maybe in your growing up years. Or maybe somebody uh, here with you today in, in the church is affected by that spirit of alcoholism. So we'll join together as the people of God, united with the bishop and the priest and the pastor. We will renounce these spirits for each other so that we're freed, right? Also, uh, we're going to open the doors of the church uh, so that we, as we renounce these spirits, they don't stay here. They have to leave. Amen? Amen? Too bad for the person passing by the street because they're going to hit by all these... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they'll go... I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> but that's okay. All right. So in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of child abuse. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of alcoholism. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of abandonment. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of family violence. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of domestic violence. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of divorce. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of adultery. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of addiction to drugs. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of abortion. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of death. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of suicide. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of self condemnation. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of hate. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of self hate. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of self-rejection. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of anxiety. 
In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of depression. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of rage. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of anger. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of jealousy. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of envy. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of gossip. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of gambling. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of pride. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of gluttony. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of sloth. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of lies. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of dishonesty. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of calumny. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of uh, Santeria. In the name of Jesus, I renounce all the New Age spirits. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of self-destruction. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of self-harm. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of terrorism. In the name of Jesus, I renounce. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of uh, abandonment. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of of apostasy. What did you say? In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of pornography. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of violence. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of avarice. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of shame. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of lust. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of evil thoughts. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of unclean thoughts. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of unclean desires. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of cowardice. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of timidity. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of timidity. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lies of Satan. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lies of Satan. Especially the lie that my life will never be okay. I renounce the lie of Satan. That God can give others new life or can't give me new life. I renounce, I renounce all the lies and the, and the temptations of Satan. Amen. Amen. Okay, now I'll pray for you by my authority as a Roman Catholic bishop. I break the bond of these spirits we've named. And I call to you, our beautiful Blessed Mother, Queen of all the angels, O August Queen, Queen of all the angels to whom God has given the power and the mission to crush Satan and to cast him out. I call you, our beautiful Blessed Mother, to crush Satan, to 
destroy all these evil spirits that are destroying your people, to combat, to send the legion of angels upon them, to combat these spirits, to cast them out, to crush them, to cast them into the, to bind them, and cast them into the deepest part of hell. O Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, by your death and resurrection, by the wounds suffered on the cross and on your, in, your, in your passion, by the precious blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Eucharist, to bind up Satan, cast him into the depths of hell, bind up all these evil spirits that are destroying your people, and cast them into the deepest part of hell. St. Michael the Archangel, place a barrier of protection around your people. Our Lady of Guadalupe, hide them under your, man, your loving ma maternal mantle of love. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give all the glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. The God the Father speaks a blessing into your heart. My beautiful brother, my beautiful sister. God the Father says to you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to suffer so much. I'm sorry that you had to endure so much. I'm sorry for the shame and the self-hate and the self-condemnation that you had to carry. This was not my plan for you. My plan for you is to give you a beautiful life. That was my dream for you. Today I want to re-establish my dream for you. To re-establish your original innocence. To give you again that, that new life. The Lord God our Father says to you, I'm sorry you had to suffer so much. I am grateful to you that despite all you've suffered, you still come and seek the Lord Jesus and his healing liberation in your life. I thank you. I'm proud of you. You stayed strong and sincere despite all you've suffered. I love you. I forgive you. And today I reestablish my dream for your life. In Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, 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 amen. Once again, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in thine ear. Amen. Amen. How do you feel? Yeah, good. <laughs> Wonderful is good. <laughs> and uh, this is what the Lord wants you to feel. Maybe during the day you're going to feel it more and more as we hear other beautiful prayers and words of liberation. But you're going, we're going to feel, you're going to feel this peace coming into your heart. That's what God wants you to have. Do not be afraid, little flock. It is the Father's will to give you the kingdom to give you the glory, to give it new life. Amen.